Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three stakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, friends. Kirk Henderson. Welcome to Mavs and Ball Group Therapy. For those listening to the recording, it's about midnight now. Uh, technically Thursday, January 27th here in the central time zone. Uh, the Mavericks just beat the crap out of the Blazers. They gave them life a couple of times, but finally, uh, it's like Jalen Brunson and Dwight Powell <laughs> led the Mavericks and just dominating uh, the Blazers who are kind of racked with injuries and also just have a glut of tiny guards who uh, aren't uh, very good on defense. Um Kind of a get-right game, shooting-wise, for a few players. is real nice. Uh, I had a real uh, good time covering the game because I could look down and write for huge stretches. But um, we'll people up. Let's talk about the game a little bit, and then let's get out of Dodge because it is late and I am tired. Coming up first, I'm going to bring friend of the program, Christian, up. How are we doing, buddy? What's going on? You're up late. Yeah, I was just about to say I- I'm tired, too. And I, I, this is, this is rough. And I couldn't imagine when you were on the East coast, this is miserable. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was miserable. I don't know how I did it in retrospect. <laughs> yeah. Like being on the West coast, I didn't realize how much I take for granted, you know, like m- late games being 7 PM. It's like, Oh yeah, this is fine. And then, you know, especially if you're home a little bit early or whatever, being able to catch a four four thirty game is fantastic. Right. It's nice having it on in the background. Oh well. <laughs> so what do you think tonight? Uh, you know, kind of just strange game. I think a lot of mental lapses, but I think in a sense we we took it a little bit for granted when we started, you know, kind of beating on them early. Um the the one thing though, I you know, I am concerned about what the when we do play a you know upper echelon team what that bench unit looks like and who might be able to carry some of that scoring um i do think we make a move i think we're kind of forced to and uh you know a a name that i had thought of that i'd seen in you know reports about not tied to the mavericks but you know someone not sexy but a holiday from the pacers um to, to kind of replicate some of that, I think we'll need to do it. But my biggest concern is, like, it's been all season long with KP in the second half. Um, yeah, he just gets progressively worse. And, and he, you know, again, it's the Blazers. When Nurk is out, they don't have anyone uh, that's a big. But, I mean, he went from playing awesome in the first half to just awful. In the second half, and it's. Well, I mean, it was after the first quarter. He was bad in yeah. the second quarter too. Um, the one thing I did think that was interesting, though, 
is last night we were essentially in this group, we were calling for the Mavericks to spam KP, Luca pick and rolls. And the Mavericks did that. Now I felt Luca sometimes hung him out to dry uh, a couple of late, couple of early passes, um, but they were running it and he was getting attempts and they just weren't going. Um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, if there's a time to work through like an offensive malaise, which is what KP is in, it's against shitty teams. I'm sure he was not pleased by the fact that he didn't play much in the fourth quarter and they really went on runs when he wasn't in the game, but you know, I, I, he's too talented. I think he'll figure some of this out. It's just, he needs time. You know, he's, he's not been right since coming back from, uh, yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, I agree. This is kind of when to, uh, test a lot of that out and, you know, he, he's in this funk, but I mean, this is, I don't know, years where P and Luca and the pick and roll largely are unstoppable and we should just, yeah, keep running it until. Well, did, do you follow his talk on Twitter? Yes. So he posted, or and he said this is a small sample size, but earlier today, this morning, he posted Christos Porzingis' effective field goal percentage on Luca on pick and pops with Luca is 22%. That's so bad, it's impossible. Like, there's just, they're going to figure this out. I, I just, I, I, I murder KP for almost a year. I, I can't help, I, I, as, as down on him as I've been, I still think that he figures this out. I just do. I, I mean, the way that defense is playing, they act like he's a 40% shooter, but he's definitely not this guy. I mean, you know, I think, and, you know, you mentioned it uh, last night. The whole team, like all of our what top seven, eight guys, their uh, three point percentages have dropped dramatically. Yeah. Um, and at some point, like, will it hit where it was last season? Probably not, but it will improve from just this awfulness. And uh, you know, I, I hope we could kind of. I, I mean, realistically, these next uh, three games are great time to uh you know try to get out of this funk and kind of try some things to to get out of the funk but um you know i i think reggie hitting uh was definitely uh nice to see and i think uh he's going to be really key especially with tim out uh if we do want to make it to the second round we're going to need reggie to knock down his threes and the defense to kind of you know, the communication needs to be like how it was uh, for this past uh, strong stretch that we had besides the past, uh, you know, last night and tonight. Yep, yep. Um, but appreciate you bringing me up, brother. Hope you have a great night. Hope you and your family stay safe. And uh, t- yeah, thanks for joining us, buddy. Appreciate you. Um, I don't know about you guys, but one thing that I'm taking away from some of these wins where they play like crap is that they're still winning. Um, the Mavericks last year did not win games against bad teams. Do we remember their record against sub 500 teams? I mean, it was, it was awful. So I'll take this. I'll take this sort of grinding out and then closing the door hard. Like that was like, that was a fun win for me. Um, okay. Coming up next. And just remember guys, I'm going to try to bring people up that I haven't seen as much in here first, just to give people a crack. Uh, first is my, my buddy and colleague, Scott, you guys know him as CBA Mavs. How are we doing? Hey, can you can hear me? I can tell already, so I'm not gonna ask. <laughs> um, I uh, I felt like tonight, man, it was just it was hard to take anything away because Portland's defense is so, so poor. Bad. But really, man, it made our team look so good. Like I I don't know, Josh, Josh Green's starting to look pretty two decent. Two and ones, you know, he in had that, two in and that. ones to finish the game. His he. His thing has always been he has a great second and third skill already with his passing and his defense. He just needs a runner, a floater, a, a three-point shot, something that can keep him on the floor on the on the uh, offensive end. And so if he continues to get better at converting those close shots, because sometimes I felt like he just always goes so wild at the rim. It was like yeah. he just got nervous and rushed it. Um but you can't you can't like be the pass first pass only player because yeah. then people just stop guarding you. Um, but I thought, man, it looked it looked great tonight. I mean, this again is the Jalen Brunson that 
I mean, what do, what do we think? Like, can he play in the playoffs against long teams that go small ball, or can he not? You know, like – I mean, it's a defining question. It's, it's the – it's probably the defining question outside of anything Porzingis related. And, again, not to kick anyone in the shins after a win, but I think the answer is no. Um, I just think the answer is no. But, you know, if you get a high enough seed, maybe it may not matter until second round. You know, uh, who, depending on who they could play, because there's a number of playoff teams who we've seen them wallop this year. You know, it, matching up against the Grizzlies, for example, I think the Mavericks match up well with them. I think it'd be fun. I think he'd be able to play in that one. Yeah, I, I think for sure. Uh, the thing that I really liked about playing the Grizzlies was just the fact that, you know, outside of Morant, which who, when he gets going too fast, it's like. Uh, it's like a child when they're drinking too quickly, it just goes everywhere. I mean, he's amazing. I know I have all my all my metaphors will include children because I have so many. I, yeah, I approve. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean, he's amazing. Like his little stop three four feet away from the goal and just kind of float it was just absolutely destroying people. But mm. when he tries to make the pass, when he gets that close and he's like in between that decision, that's when if he if he develops that, then man. Uh, the Grizzlies will have a closer who who I would be really afraid of. Uh, yeah. But currently, uh, if he's if he's just taken over by scoring, it's fine. But if he tries to make those little in between passes, it's not good. Yeah. But man, I, I don't know what to think about going into the trade deadline. I, I really think we're actually. I, I like Tim Hardaway Jr. I approved the re re sign, even though now that's like a bad thing to say because uh, I thought it was wise to have somebody who could get up a shot um, on the team when when. When we didn't have Brunson, we didn't think that Brunson was going to be able to do this. So it's like we needed another player who can get up a shot. Uh, that was the thinking in re-signing him. But, man, I think we're actually going to get a bit of a bump with him not being in the game and replacing him with Frank and, and Green and more Bullock. Just because the offense will – the offense w- is not going to be any worse, mm-hmm. and the defense will obviously be way better. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be interested to see how they how they spare – how they, like – match up those minutes with certain dudes because it's 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 interesting. I also think I also think if the Mavericks do somehow end up with Goran Dragic, that's another person who soaks up minutes in different avenues and can do things in different ways. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm very disappointed in the Tim thing. We talked about it a little bit last night. Um just because I I I think he's you know, he, he was one of their key offseason acquisitions and, you know, he's probably out for the rest of the year. I mean, feet stuff, feet stuff is really tricky. It's, it's, it's frustrating, but uh, you know, it, the fact that their, their schedule over the next 30 something games or whatnot, it, it is not the worst in the world yeah. um, is going to help them. Like if anything, I, I made the joke earlier tonight that maybe their offensive rating will finally take a bump just because they're playing garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I, I will also say that, man, uh, Bullock is a uh, Bullock. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah. He's up to 39% for this month. Uh, I, I, I find that maybe we kind of have the Danny Green problem when you're building mm. around a star in that. And, and what I mean by that is that when you bet on uh, three point shooting, you know, even the best three point shooter is still missing more than they make. So it, it, if you're, if your off season acquisitions like Tim Hardaway Jr., like Bullock, like, Dor- Dor- I don't get it back in the past, Josh Richardson, everybody. It's like you – when the difference between a 32% is like, oh, crap, trade him, and 38%, oh, wow, this guy's great. It's like you're going to have problems trying to, like, bet on three-point shooting to be yes. uh, something that's going to reproduce every time. Um, but, man, I, I will say, KP and Luca, dude, how are they so bad at shooting threes this year? It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's really odd. It's really, I mean, that's why it's like there were 16 to 36 on the floor and Josh Bo and I just talked about this where it's like you look through their shooters and it's, Oh, Frank hit two of four and Reggie was four of seven. So that's, that's, you know, over 33% of their makes right there. Uh, or no, I guess it's under, I can't do math. I'm tired, but it's, you know, six no, of the 10 you. makes was from two guys who haven't been hitting threes. And it's just like, I, the only thing I can think of is there's, there's nowhere to go, but up at a certain point for, for, for the shooting from guys. It's like, Maybe it's just going to happen. Maybe it's the ball. Who knows? Right. Who knows? I, I do I do think one stat that people haven't talked about enough is just, like, our defense is good, but also, like, we have a really high defensive rebound percentage. And so what, 
one of the reasons we have that is because our ball handler is six foot eight and can get which can get rebounds. You know, it's the same so group of like, guys who used to get killed on the boards last year. Right. I agree. I agree. But I, I will say that um, I was going to pivot to the fact that if we get Goran Dragic, he's also a good rebounder for his size, too. So it's like I like the idea of us not having anybody who's a poor rebounder uh, going into the playoffs just because, like, that is the most deflating thing is to give up offensive rebounds. And some of these teams that have those bullies, man, in the paint, like Steven Adams, it just felt always – it always feels so inevitable. It's like, man, these guys are killing us. So just keeping that rebound percentage up – and then trying to like uh, run this uh, more aggressive drop ish scheme that we're running, I think will will result in a, a high rate defense, surprisingly. But with Tim out, it'll be even could even get better. Yes, well, it was fun. It was a fun game. All right, all right, man. Um, you got anything else for us tonight? Um, any if anybody has any trades. There's something I, I can figure out for you, but man, uh, can you can you recap? I don't know what Mark Stein Mark Stein said on his uh, green room. So can you? Oh, can I mean, you, I'm gonna hang up. I'm a, yeah. He just saying. What is he saying? I'll tell. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll let you hang up and oh. listen. But it was it was nothing interesting. I mean, it's the sort of thing where. And thanks for coming up, Scott. Um, it was the sort of thing where he essentially said the Mavericks are playing. Hardball, you know, that that both Brunson and Dorian are untouchable, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, it's it's the 27th. I can't – you should post in the chat when the trade deadline is. Like, it's that part of the bargaining process, I suppose. I just – I can't believe they would do nothing. Um, and yet I can totally believe they would do nothing. So, we'll see. Um, oh, and then we – he and I talked a little bit about Kobe Bryant for a bit at the tail end of his podcast. Wow, there's a lot of y'all tonight. Um, coming up next is a name I've not seen in here before. How are you, friend? Due course. I'll let you hit the unmute button there at the bottom so you can join the chat. Sorry, I didn't uh, bring you up uh, correctly. I'm very tired tonight. Due course, join us up here. All right, I will try to invite him again a little bit later if he's able to find the unmute button. Um, let's see here. Austin, it's been a while. How's it going? This is my first time joining Kirk, so I appreciate you bringing me up. Is it? Shoot. Uh, Sorry. I get, I see same names on social media platforms and. (laughs) Yeah, I've, I've tweet, I've tweeted like all of you guys, uh, several times, but I, I think this is my first time, you know, usually I'm in bed by now with, uh, you know, with a year and a half old child, you know, I try to hit the hit the pillow earlier sure. than this. But, you know, I determined that the Blazers game was worth staying up for. So um, I think because I'm used to pain when the Blazers got within four, I was like, we're going to lose this game. Like last year, we definitely would have lost that game. So. Um, it was nice to see the defense kind of just decide to clamp down. Uh, and I really enjoyed that about this year's team that they, they do seem to have the mentality of, okay, let's settle down, get back kind of to just defending the defending and, and, and they, uh, ended up running away with it. So my concern is, when we're not playing the Blazers. And I I think that's most Mavericks fans that watch many of the games. It's, you know, like uh, Scott was saying, you know, we looked awesome tonight, but, you know, we didn't last night against a really good team. So I, I feel like we just have to make a trade. It's, you know, we've been saying that for, I think 10 years now, but, uh, feels like this could be the year that we actually have some assets to do that. Um, so I'm just, you know, I'd be curious if, if you had any, any thoughts on a move you would like to see, or maybe someone that would be an ideal fit that would kind of fit this roster based on what we've been seeing the last few games. I don't, I'm really bad at this. And then my good buddy, (laughs) my good buddy, Dalton Trigg, Floods our timelines with uh, trades, which I tease him relentlessly about that I don't think are remotely plausible. So I just I don't know what to do because I'm I'm hit at one end with me being pessimist, and then at the other end with you know 
well, we should keep an eye on Bradley Beal. And I'm just like, I, I can't, I can't do this. So I, I'm, I, I'm going to be interested to see if they do come up with something because, you know, the bottom line is, and, and, you know, Scott posted about this in the Mav CBA FAQ. If you look it up on Mavs Moneyball, there's a lot of stuff in there where a fair amount of people in our fan base are very concerned that the Mavericks are going to be overpaying for a team that is underperformed. And by underperformed, I mean, maybe hasn't left the first round because Jalen Brunson is going to ask for a lot of money and it's, deserved is is I don't want to tell anyone what they are and aren't worth but he's going to earn he's going to be offered a large contract um and he's a person who hasn't really performed well in the playoffs and then you have Dorian Finney-Smith who is such a very important cog for this team and makes not very much money but is is a 10 point per game guy and it just you come back to these two guys who have very clear limitations but work very well when things are working very well and they're probably the two most tradable pieces for the Mavs and you know that's the struggling part about trades is you got to give to get you know it, we've had friend of the show Seth Partnow in here who is a former Milwaukee Bucks front office person who essentially said on the record that the Mavericks expected to dominate every trade, which is why they didn't do anything for a period of years. Like Cuban was impossible to deal with because he does stuff like label players untouchable. And like, that's just, that's, it's not a negotiating tactic that really has seemed to work for the Mavericks. So I, I think they do something. I don't know what that something is, but if they don't do anything, I'm not going to be too hot and bothered because, and I've said this before, say it again, when you trade, when you when you fall in the draft in 2018, and you have to trade a pick to go up and get Luca, then you have to trade two more picks to go up and get Chris Dapp for Zingas. You've sort of made your bet because picks are really the currency for trades in the NBA, and the Mavericks don't have a lot of that currency. Yeah, I I'm kind of I'm I agree with you on that, and and I think you know. I, I won't be too bothered if if the Mavs don't make a trade. I think what would bother me is we don't make a trade. We either lose first round again, that would be devastating, or lose second round. And then in the off season we try to still commit a lot of money to Dorian and Jalen and just knowing that you know, we already know what we have and it's, it's not good enough. And, you know, you said it when, when things are going well <clears throat> and for this roster, when things are going well and Maxie's hitting his shots and Jalen, you know, doesn't forget how to play basketball for like five minute stretches and Dorian hits, things look amazing. But I think we've all seen uh, plenty of times that, when those things aren't lining up perfectly, we can tend to get blown out by good teams. So yeah. I would love to see, you know, someone new come in. But like you said, unfortunately, someone we all like or love as a member of the Mavs has to go out the door for that to happen. But, you know, I'm, I want to see a title. I don't really yeah. care yeah. about names so much on the back of the jersey. <laughs> That's right. No, that's exactly right, Austin. It's a little harsh to talk like that, but it's also exactly correct in my opinion. You don't, you know, you wish for the best for these guys while also, you know, you want to win a ring. And and that's just sort of the, the way it goes. I, I do think that this year is a bit of a trap for the Mavericks in the sense that the West is sort of in shambles for reasons that are outside of anybody's control. You know, you got Paul George uh, and Kawhi Leonard, injured you have half of the nuggets injured and like the nuggets are a dominating team when healthy and the Mavericks just these same guys um there's there's things that could bounce back in a hurry and i think that that they there's the opportunity for these guys to settle into sort of the complacency trap of oh this is the team that's going to carry us places and i just don't know if that's the case but right now they're winning right now they're doing fine and i'm very happy with how they're playing and like the ways that they're progressing and so let's just let's see where things go. Well, Austin, do you got anything else? No, man, that that's all I've got. And, you know, like you said, it's it's fun watching Mavs basketball on on most nights right now. So that's a, a huge victory for all of us. And that's right. I, uh, I appreciate you bringing me up and hopefully I can can get in a few more of these rooms in the future. 
Appreciate you. I hope you join again. Yeah, and uh, enjoy those. Uh, I think you said you have an 18 month old. 18 to 24 months was my favorite because my son was talking without talking back. And then two hits and life changes. Um, coming up next, let's go, Carlo. Carlo, how are we doing? Thanks for joining again. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you barely. Come a little closer to the uh, the uh, phone mic. Let me take out my headphones. Yeah, that sometimes causes headphones, sometimes cause issues. So <sighs> there we go. I'm uh, with the uh, CBA moms that uh, the Tim Hardaway Jr. injury came right at the at the time that we need uh, him to not play because he was doing fine, and uh, I really want to take away all his minutes and giving them to Josh Green and Nicky Dino. So that's okay. I, I don't like having injured player, but it's not a bad time to have uh, an injured one. You're basically saying you would prefer that the minutes he's getting, uh, whether he's hurt or not, give it be given to someone. Yeah. But, um, and also about uh, the... About the trades, I don't think that the Mamsters should trade anyone this season. And it's because, like, they are the two guys that uh, people want are Dorian and Branson, and uh, they are on an expiring contract. So you are not getting something from them. What are you saying? From from Jalen and Dorian on a half year contract. Yeah, yeah, I I, I think that may be an, a a reason why we've heard that they're untradeable. Is the Mavericks aren't happy with any of the offers that they're getting. And, and like I, I get to the other teams, I, why the she, the Celtics should pay a lot for Branson on a rental for a half year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unless they're confident that they can resign him, and as Scott has pointed out. Bird yeah, but thing also, for- what they are not going to give you even like Marcus Smart, and we don't want to give out uh, our secondary playmaker to get the Smart, which isn't what we need. Because if we had Branson and Luca, then Smart would be really good. But if we have only Luca. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be that good. So, the idea for me for the Mavs to get trades is resign both of them and go in, into the luxury and pay what you need to pay. And if you can try to swap uh, this year uh, first round pick uh, at the draft with the Knicks uh, for the twenty twenty three draft pick the one we owe to them. Yep. So after that, we have six uh, picks, uh, six first-round picks, uh, and if uh, any good uh, player uh, want, uh, wants to be traded, we can get them. Given yeah. a me, like Branson on a $20 million at a year contract. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm the, the pick that they owe the Knicks is really hamstringing a lot of, uh, you know, almost – all possible trade stuff because it's a top 10 protected 2023 pick and the Mavericks would either have, they, they need to remove the protection from that pick if they want to do something in the future. But personally, I'm of the opinion that they're holding on to all of their picks to have a hail Mary, like 2024 Luca, please don't leave us trade if he's pissed off. <laughs> but that's just my, that's just me being grumpy in the, at 1230 at but, night. But it's right. Like even if you get the, Someone like Drew. It's not a player that we have because Kristaps. Uh, I I love Kristaps, but he's not a defendable player. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I understand. Uh, thanks for having me because uh, I can't get to these uh, rooms uh, nearly as much as I want because now it's uh, seven thirty in, in the morning in Italy. Understood. Well, thank you for joining us so early. We'll talk soon, Carl. I hope you come back. All right. Bye. Okay. Let's fly through some of my folks I've seen more regularly. Josh, how are we doing tonight, buddy? 
Hey, Kirk. How are you? I'm okay. <laughs> I can tell by your voice. Yeah, hit, hitting a little. Well, in regards to that, I wanted to um, maybe spark a couple of thoughts that can kind of maybe pull some of the conversations out of the, you know, doldrum of trades that probably won't happen, but if they do, great. But it becomes like kind of this theoretical doldrum of constant theorizing about stuff like Carlo pointed out is seems counterintuitive. Uh, one of those observations that kind of occurred to me, you know, from I listen to these all the time, but I can't always call in. Um, but basically, like watching, you know, kind of. You know, the Mavs lose to the Warriors. By the way, the Warriors were shooting great. And they yeah, had looked been. like the Warriors. <laughs> Yo, they were they 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 were like, Oh, here's our stride. We caught it at home on a nationally televised game. Speaking of nationally televised games, I've noticed something. Um it's not really, you know, statistical, but it is an overarching they lose um, most of their nationally televised games. <laughs> no, no. Why, the reason why oh. is is that I've noticed that in the kind of stretch where we were winning all these games, the rotation was pretty wide uh, because it had to be. So you were you were going deeper into the bench, and what it was doing is it seemed to foster, you know, the team to really, um move the ball. I mean, it was, it was popping um, like it was tonight, but I've noticed that in the nationally televised games, maybe it's like kid, you know, kind of getting his kind of um, sea legs in coaching. Wow. I've noticed that they get really um, like he, it feels like the team is trying to shorten the rotation to not fuck up. When it, there, I think the moment's big for him as a coach, and I think he's having a problem with it because, man, the, the, the rotations aren't fluid. You're waiting so long for people to come in and out. Marquise Chris never sees the floor. Josh yeah. he just sees a couple minutes because he's like, oh, I'm going to go with my guys. But actually those guys, ha- you know, I don't know. It doesn't feel like a team. It feels like. Uh, you know, two thirds of a team. I don't know the, the the some of the the rotation stuff for kid has been weird all year. Um, I mean, he like he he played Luca like thirteen and a half minutes to start the game tonight, and I was I was really seriously thinking I was like, okay, this is going to be a game where he makes Luca go get cardio to get his ass in shape, and hmm. and you know, I, some of the things that he, and he's talked about this in post game where he's like, I am going to get weird with things. He is he has admitted it, so. I'm not really I, I would need to look into the national team stuff or national game stuff to see. Um there are there have been some games for certain, like the Suns game where they really wanted to win that game. Um and and you know, I, I, I guess I understand where coming from from big picture, but I don't have enough information in front of me to really to really make a make a, a judgment call on it. Because it feels like when we're all looking at these games and we're and we're coming in here and talking about them, because like I said, I listen to all of them. It gets kind of reactionary, like highs on the wins and lows on the losses and worries about, you know, personnel, right? Mm-hmm. But but when we're watching the games and people talk about how they feel, they feel – and you've I've kind of noticed it when you're talking is that I notice that people kind of talk about how the maps feel you know, during those, during these high profile games that they've lost too many of is that they're kind of like, I don't know. It's kind of in their head. If they just loosened up the damn rotation, I think also, okay, well, if they lose at least these, these, you know, further down the bench guys are getting reps um, and confidence in that. Sure. Uh, but if you're going to if you're going to get tighter in all the big games, then you're actually not prepping for the playoffs. 
I can see that. No, I, I, I can see that. I mean, that's where, again, there's not a silver lining to, to Tim getting hurt, but he, he is going, kid is, kid is going to have to play certain guys more just so, uh, because they have to eat up the minutes. And so there's some of that stuff is going to get hoisted upon him, whether he wants it to happen or not. Yeah, and 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 that's why I also can't help but agree because uh, Hardaway's been abominable. Um, on one last observation, let it go. Uh, on a on a lighter note, I love the Dallas broadcast, but tonight I watched the uh, Trailblazers broadcast, and I have to say uh, they're quite pleasant as opposed to other. I recommend really? trying it now and again for, for other teams. I really do. If you have the, the, the league pass and you can look around and you can use like a VPN or something if you're in the Dallas area, I recommend trying it out now and again because sometimes it's just nice to hear different perspectives. Other times it's hilarious to hear bullshit homers. Um, oh, God, some of them are just awful. But these guys were cool, and they were really honing in on the Mavericks as far uh other like not getting, you know, to that kind of like complaining, lamenting thing. And when there was all that, those kind of reviews for flagrants, they were Mm -hmm. pretty even. Um, And uh, one last funny detail, he, one of the, 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 the the, like straight guy on the broadcast made a really funny, uh, (laughs) funny, he, he spit a funny piece of verbiage. He said, McCullum, pretzelized Porzingis on that play. <laughs> I think I know the play you're talking about, too. It was like one of those up and under things where he just gets right past Porzingis and Porzingis is looking it. like last year. Yeah, yeah. Pretzelized. So oh, that's a good one. There, I'll leave with that. Uh, thanks again, Kirk, and uh, go Mavs. All right. Thanks, buddy. Talk soon. All right. Who else we got? Grayson, what's happening? Thanks for waiting all night unless you fell asleep. Hi, Kirk. <laughs> hey, buddy. How you doing? I was going to say, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Josh Green um, because I like what I'm seeing from him. He seems to have gained a little bit more confidence, but at the same time, like I've seen a lot of these guys, like Maxi seems for the most part pretty confident in the regular season. And then the playoffs come and they become almost unplayable because they just don't seem very confident. They seem really scared to shoot or even touch the ball. Um, and they just kind of become bodies. Um, so I, I'm curious if you think that any of the end of bench guys could really have a role in the playoffs like Josh. I mean, we all know what the stars are going to do and, but, I mean, there was even times last year where Brunson was unplayable during the playoffs, so I don't know. It's Things are also different now with Kidd, I think, versus Rick. But, what, anyway, what do you think about that? I think you might be muted unless you're. Oh yeah. That's the way this is just great. I just love talking to myself for 30 seconds. Um, so there's a guy who came on the show last night or the night before. I don't remember all the stuff was blurring together who basically said he felt that Tim was struggling because Tim was being asked to do too much. Uh, whereas Rick basically had him go shoot and that's what he was best at. And I, I really have been thinking about that for like two days. Because I think compared to a guy like uh, Jalen Brunson and Dorian, who have really excelled while doing more, like Dorian is career high in assists. Jalen Brunson looks like a, you know, kind of a starting level guard on like a fringe playoff team, you know, even without Luca. And then you get like Maxi, and Maxi is, I think, closer to Tim in the fact that the next time Maxi dribbles is, is should be the last time. Like nothing good happens. He dribbles into long twos. I just want that guy to catch and shoot, catch, shoot, or move the ball. That's all. That's what I want to see Maxi do. So I don't know. It's 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 a weird deal at the moment where it's like you, you want to see these guys continue to play well, but it's just you know certain people are meant to do certain things. Like a you know basketball has a hierarchy. Not everybody needs to be good at everything, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. Um, that's just what I've been thinking about lately. Uh, just so random. We're just at that point in the season 
where it's kind of the dog days. Oh yeah. Uh, and I just, I don't know. The, the, I, I, I do care about this team and I am keeping up with everything, but they're also kind of in the back of my mind right now. For sure. No, I, I mean, I, I had to write the recap for a site that has 15 contributors because no one wanted to do it because <laughs> it's January and it's late at night. So. Yeah, I bet you had that finished by like the third quarter, the way they were playing. Something, yeah. I mean, I had I had a good time arg- uh, uh, arguing with somebody on Twitter who was being weird to me, but uh, that's that. All right, um, thank you so much for joining. My dog is barking at something. That's neat. Um, and uh, let's talk soon, Grayson. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was fun. All right. Let's see here. Last but not least, I think we have Chris, who's been waiting a while. Sorry, Chris. Welcome up. Yeah, I hung in there till the end. I'm insane for staying up this late talking about math stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just say you joined most nights, and I was trying to get to folks that have not seen. Oh no, no, it's all good. Oh, actually, kind of uh, reminding me of this moment, a very obscure moment. It happened ten years ago on Mavs Live, because I'm crazy. I watched the pre and post game Mavs Live shows. So it was Dana Larson and Bob Ortigal were doing the show, and it was one of those late night games. She's like, okay. Mavs live here. We're going to burn the midnight oil, Bob. And Bob was like, oh, I can't be doing too many of these late night games. And Dana Larson was like, hey, that's when you do your best work, Bob. It was, <laughs> yeah. I miss and his Bob. face t- blushed so bad. Like, you just embarrassed. Like, it was. That's like, amazing. Yeah. I love that. I, miss, I, I wish they would, you know, these seasons are so long. And I know these guys love covering games. But I wish they would, like, like having Coop, uh, Chuck Cooperstein, join the show or join the broadcast has been like just a nice change of pace. I and mean, we, I'm sure they don't want to do this, but I, I wish they could like mix in some stuff now and then like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mark follow. I'm just biased, I guess, but he's just my sure. favorite. I mean, cause I, wa- I have league pass and I watch, I pretty much watch NBA all day. I mean, all, you know, every night and stuff. I mean, most of the other games and yeah, some of those other broadcasters are horrible, but yeah, tonight, um, yeah, and like last night I wasn't on the green room last night. I mean, that wasn't a disappointing loss to me. I mean, it just, we're going to have a clunker here and there, but tonight was a good bounce back win. Everybody's playing good. Um, my thing about THJ, like I'm kind of echoing everybody's sentiments about, I think we're going to, this is like a silver lining to it and I hope he gets better and all, but I mean, he's been playing horrible all year. Yeah. This might force them to, to trade him, but obviously I really think the Mavs three point shooting is going to be going up now just because him not playing. I mean, that's just plain and simple. He just <laughs> takes these rushed impulsive three point shots. It's just like, even, but actually, last night I was noticing, and it sucked because one, he was driving a lot more, and that was actually his downfall in getting that injury. But yeah. I was wanting him to do stuff like that. I'm like, you're not making your threes all season. Just do something different because you can get to the basket, do some dunks. Um, just try something different. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah, hopefully he gets better. And, I mean, somebody was on the message thing here was saying about Dragic. Uh, Toronto's interested, I guess. I don't know. I don't talk about trade stuff, but – if they're interested in taking Tim Hardaway, I mean, we can get Tim Hardaway Jr. off our off the books, you know, and get Dragic because we're going to get him anyway. I guess. I mean, that wouldn't that couldn't be a bad thing. So that was my man Ethan. I see him down there in the chat. Sometimes I think Ethan likes throwing grenades in the chat. To see what <laughs> all say. Not, okay. That strikes me as a little wild that they would want him, even though the salaries are actually pretty close. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, but, uh, thanks, Chris, for staying up late. Oh yeah, yeah. Last thing, yeah. So we got uh, the Pacers. Got to welcome. Uh, Coach Carlo, a.k.a. our shizzle, RK, uh, <laughs> Uncle Rick, uh, Rick the Dick. Yeah, yeah. He's just one of my favorite coaches just because he won us a championship. So I, well, I and apparently, apparently KP, I got to find this because uh, <laughs> uh, apparently KP was saying in the post game, like in one of the post game zooms, I got to find this because Doyle was doing this. He said, uh, uh, Christoph Frizinga said he's going to get, I think, a great reception on, and that was the question was about Rick Carlisle's return to Dallas. And it's like, if there was, a, you know, there's enough stuff out there by now where it's like Luca was just kind of tuning him out. Like he was like the parent who just, he just didn't listen to his parents anymore. Like <laughs> KP and Luca or KP and Rick actively did not get along. So I just think that sort of stuff is funny. And now they have to all go be nice and like public facing and that sort of stuff. I'm really looking forward yeah. to that. As long as they keep racking up wins, I, should, I don't care. Because we've got a weak schedule coming up besides the Sixers, you know, the next four games. Uh, we can definitely, you know, w- win probably all these games. I mean, the next four or five. So, I mean, count, counting the one we did tonight. So, let's just keep keep this rolling. The, forget about the Suns and the, and the whole Warriors thing because we knew those probably going to be losses anyway. Let's just get out of the fucking first round. That's all I care about. 
right now. Just get out of the first round. So. All right, Chris. Thanks for hanging out late. Appreciate yeah. you. Thanks, Kurt. All right. All right. I'm going to go to bed. Um, tomorrow I'm going to try to run a sub six minute mile at Orange Theory. So if I die, just uh, remember that uh, you had fun in my green rooms. Everybody be good and uh, we'll be back Saturday night. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical.